Waste solutions can curb 84% of global trash emissions, but nations are neglecting waste in climate plans. Waste reduction solutions like segregation, composting and recycling could cut waste sector emissions by an average of 84%, or more than 1.4 billion tons of carbon dioxide, which is equivalent to taking all motor vehicles off the road in the United States for one year, a report by an anti-waste burning advocacy group finds. The waste sector is the third largest source of anthropogenic methane emissions, whose reduction will deliver rapid benefits through avoided warming. This, zero waste, approach can reduce flooding, deter disease transmission, improve soil health, and deliver economic opportunities. Methane, the second most potent climate agitant after carbon dioxide, is estimated to be responsible for 23% of all heating caused by greenhouse gases. Reforming the waste sector could cut global methane emissions by 13% globally, it read. Seoul already diverts 96% of its organic waste by source separation. Each type of trash is disposed of using separate bins or direct delivery of specific waste types to drop off facilities. South Korea's most populous city has aggressive methods of separate collection and treatment of organic waste and recycling programs which can reduce harmful gases setting it on course to achieve net negative emissions by the end of the decade. In the past 30 years, the public is given more incentive to generate less waste because they are asked to pay for waste treatment according to how much they generate. There is also a free collection mechanism for recyclable waste, encouraging locals to be more active in waste separation and recycling. However, South Korea's waste program is marred by its reliance on incineration, which produces double the volume of greenhouse gases as replacement sources of energy, according to the report. The East Asian country has also been called out for dumping its garbage on its neighbors. In 2019, the Philippines shipped back 6,500 tons of mixed waste to Korea which had been misdeclared as plastic flakes and did not have proper importation permits. The following year, Philippine customs officials returned 80 containers of unsorted plastic materials, used dextrose tubes, soiled diapers, discarded electronics, and household garbage in violation of national laws and the Basel Convention, which put limits on the international trade in waste. If incineration and illegal waste exportation are phased out, the city could save over 885% of annual emissions by 2030 which is equivalent to the annual emissions from 1.4 natural gas-fired power plants. Bandung, Indonesia was cited for being the only city analyzed which had an action plan to reduce food waste as part of its zero-waste model, allowing it to potentially cut its waste emissions by half in seven years. Its food waste prevention program collects bruised, unpalatable but still edible food and processes it into pickles and sauces. This is critical since the majority of emissions come from landfilled organic waste. Globally, a third of all food produced is not eaten and is responsible for as much as 10% of global greenhouse gas emissions. Tackling food waste could lower up to 5% of global emissions, according to researchers. Most of these emissions reductions occur in the production and transportation of food even before it reaches consumers, which points to gross inefficiencies in food systems. Elsewhere, Gaia analysis showed that the city of Detroit in the United States and the Ukrainian city of Lviv could lower their waste sector emissions by as much as 102% and 93%, respectively, if they are able to divert organic waste from landfills, their biggest source of methane. Temica, a remote Chilean city inhabited by mostly indigenous groups, does not have a separate collection system for its recyclables or organic materials, but it has the potential to slash its emissions by 73% by taking the zero-waste approach. Despite these findings, more than a quarter of countries' current climate plans neglect the waste sector.